You know you need calcium when you bite into like a wrap from Starbucks and your brittle teeth just fall apart. Realistically, you probably don't need extra calcium. Okay, we probably are getting enough from the diet. The reality is, is it's usually the other minerals that we are deficient in. But if you understand how calcium works, it can tell us a lot about like when you need some. So I'm gonna explain sort of the biochemistry of how a muscle contracts with calcium and kind of how magnesium plays a role there too, so you can determine, oh, maybe I should get a little bit more calcium in, whether it's through supplement form or maybe through some foods, okay? So we'll break it all down. After this video, I do want you to check out Thrive Market. They're an online membership-based grocery store and they're a big supporter of this channel. So if you need any kind of like calcium-rich foods, stuff like that, you probably can find some there. They're all sorted by category, paleo, keto, vegan, whatever, you name it, different categories, and you sort by the foods within those categories, get them delivered to your doorstep, saves you a ton of time and honestly much more economical than having to go to the grocery store. And it's just easy because it's right there on your doorstep in a couple of days. So there's a link down below to save 25% off a Thrive membership plus a free gift if you do use the link down below. And a big thank you to Thrive Market for the continued support on this channel. They are awesome. So inside your muscle, you have this thing called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which again sounds like some kind of weird weird, almost horror zone that you don't want to go into, okay? But the sarcoplasmic reticulum has a bunch of calcium in it, okay? And what happens is when you start to contract a muscle, when it receives a nerve signal, the muscle, the sarcoplasmic reticulum spits out a bunch of calcium. So this calcium leaves the sarcoplasmic reticulum and binds to something called tropomyosin. When it binds to tropomyosin, it triggers this whole change within our muscles, okay? And it triggers something else called myosin to bind to something called actin. Now, this is all complicated, weird stuff, but basically, this calcium is triggering the chain reaction that allows a muscle to contract. Once you have actin and myosin touching each other or bound to each other by you know, this crossing of proteins, then the muscle can contract. Well. What happens is after the muscle is done contracting, it releases the calcium and the calcium comes back into the muscle. Okay, well, and then it repeats the cycle all over again. But when calcium is not binding to those receptors outside of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, magnesium is. Okay, so magnesium is present when your muscles are relaxed and the second that a muscle is contracted, it's calcium related. So a lot of times you are having too much calcium, right, where you are like constricted all the time and you're, you're contracting and you're cramping. So a lot of times it's not that you need to reduce your calcium when you're cramping, it's that you need to possibly increase your magnesium. Now a general rule of thumb to know here, slight digression, is that magnesium cramps are usually going to come later on after like a workout. They usually come in the middle of the night, like a magnesium cramp will hit your leg in the middle of the night, whereas a potassium related cramp, which is a different story, usually happens like during a workout. So if you get immediate cramps during a workout, probably potassium related. But what does it feel like if you're low in calcium? Well, have you ever had those workouts where you feel like you're just not able to contract? You're not able to send a signal from the brain to your muscle? Like you just feel kind of weak and, and, and kind of just dead? That is generally a calcium related thing. And it's usually, again, it's usually about having so much calcium that your body has unbound calcium and bound calcium that's not doing its proper job. So even when you are potentially deficient in calcium, it's probably not manifesting in the way that you think. Okay, it takes quite a bit to become deficient in calcium. It's usually just a off kilter ratio of magnesium to calcium. So the three things you kind of want to watch out for to indicate that yes, you might be having a little bit of a calcium imbalance, it might be time to take a calcium supplement. Okay, one is going to be you neurologically just cannot get stimulated in the brain. Like you cannot get your brain to fire. I'm not talking about motivation, I'm talking about just that sharpness, that edginess that you would normally get. Okay, the next one is going to be, again, just not being able to contract your muscles. Muscles, not being able to feel it, not being able to uh, feel like you're connecting with your muscle, feel like it's so constantly in a relaxed state. Because remember, calcium is involved in that triggering, in that contraction. So if you're not feeling that contraction, well, that's a good indicator. If it's that extreme, it's a good indicator that you probably need to add more calcium. I would never recommend adding more than like 100 to 200 milligrams of calcium at a time because it is what is called excitatory. It can stimulate you to be almost too 
tonic and too like tight and too contracted all the time, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid when we take magnesium. Another thing that you might notice is like, it's a little bit anecdotal, is this extra thirst all the time. Now, this is anecdotal and I haven't found any clinical evidence on this, but it makes some sense, right? The reason you might feel extra thirsty when you are deprived of calcium is simply because you are having such a concentration of calcium, you're having such a concentration of other minerals that it's throwing off some of the nerve signaling. So it's throwing off this signal that you might feel a little bit more thirsty. Now, that doesn't mean every time you get thirsty you need calcium. It's just one of those things when it's combined with that inability to contract a muscle that you might feel. So the bottom line is outside of testing calcium stores, outside of bone density, outside of those things, there's not a lot of things that tell us that we are deficient in calcium. But it can happen in an acute level during a workout, but generally speaking, you're going to excrete more magnesium, potassium, and possibly sodium than anything else. The first thing that I would recommend if you feel like you're deficient in calcium before even adding calcium in is actually add sodium in, because that's going to help hold some of those other minerals in. But if you look at a lot of electrolyte products, you typically find that they usually have sodium, potassium and magnesium. They don't add calcium in because most of the time when we're talking about exercise related mineral deficiencies or mineral loss, we're not losing calcium. We're usually holding on to calcium and it's making us contract too much. So at the end of the day, it's probably not happening, but you need to be paying attention either way. I'll see you tomorrow.